Hi, I'm Gil Benberg from Phoenix Stages and TalkingBroadway.com, and I am here with the cast of Arizona Broadway Theater's Hair, <laughs> woo, which runs here in Peoria through March 25th. So, uh, and let me introduce you first, I guess that would make sense. Uh, we have Ryan Michael Crimmins, Adrian Rafat, Chanel Bragg, and Katie Hart. So let's go back 50 years. So Hair opens off Broadway in 1967 and basically shakes the theater world with its frank depiction of free love, sex, and the activism of the youth of that period against the Vietnam War. So, you know, the messages in the show are really relevant still today. Um, but it's a show that I think a lot of people may know some of the songs from the show, especially Aquarius. Um, but it's, it's a show that really isn't done a lot. I think this is only the second production that I'm aware of in the Valley in probably the past five to 10 years. Wow. Um, so Adrian, for people who might know the songs but don't know the story of the show, what would you tell them it's about? Well, like you said, it's a story of, of free love and open sexuality and um, freedom and <clears throat> fighting for what you believe in and things like that. And it's more than anything, it's a period piece vaudeville. It's a, it's a vaudeville performance. It's all commentary on that time specifically. And the story is pretty loosely around this tribe and their interactions with each other, their relationships, and how that reflects upon how they've been raised and how they've surrounded themselves. And it follows also loosely the character Claude with his moral debate between what he's obligated to do in the tribe or what he's obligated to do with his family or his country. And, and Ryan, my, Ryan, you, you play Cole. Yeah. yeah. Even though it is, it's really a series of vignettes with, with, the, with yeah. the, the theme of Claude sort of um, strung throughout it. Mm -hmm. um, but you all invest your characters, even the smallest characters who might have a little solo, with such passion and such dedication. And, and Katie, you play Sheila. Mm -hmm. And you know, talking about these youth activists, she's really the main activist in the group. Yeah. Um, but she's also, she's not only passionate, but she's a, also a very complicated character. Right. She's involved with this interesting sort of relationship <laughs> with the two of you. Um, you know, how do you identify with that? And, and what, what can you tell us more about Sheila? Um, well, I can pull from my own life, my own life experiences with relationships and just um, exploring things and figuring out what you want in life. And I think Sheila feels like she is free to do that in this tribe. And I think that's really cool. Um, she has, you know, one foot in the real world because she's an NYU student, right. and so she can be the go-between. Um, she can bring information back, um, and I just think for her, it's about learning from Claude and Berger and from the tribe, and just taking what she can and doing what she can with it to try to make a difference. Yeah. So the production here at ABT, it's a very immersive experience. You know, a lot of you go out into the audience throughout the show in a very respectful way. For, for those of you who have to go out into the audience, you know, it's a little bit of improvisation. It's not scripted for the most part. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that? Is it a thrilling experience or is it scary? Well, I can speak to that. Um, it's a thrilling experience, number one. But what's really cool about the dynamic of this show is that there really isn't a set pattern. Like, Curtis is amazing that he gave us a good outline of what he wanted us to do but the interactions that we have even with each other change show to show mm -hmm. this show i may embrace somebody differently than i embraced them just at the matinee yeah. <laughs> you know a couple of hours right. earlier and the same with the audience going out to the audience and making those connections are different every single time sometimes people are receptive sometimes people are not sometimes people are crying so you don't know what mixed bag you're gonna get and I think Adrian could <laughs> test that the most because he uh, <laughs> breaks the fourth wall and talks to the audience like a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think it's thrilling and it, it makes going to work fun every day. Because it's different, I guess, right? You never of know course. what you're going to get. Yeah. So, so, Adrian, let's talk about this whole tribal concept. Yes. You know, how did you achieve that, you know, cohesive unit with this cast when you've got people like yourself who are making their ABT debut here mm -hmm. and you have someone like Chanel who's been in, you know, a lot of shows here at ABT. Uh -huh. So how, how difficult was that? Because it's not like you have months and months of rehearsal period to sort of get this group uh, you know, as a unit. It wasn't difficult at all. I mean, uh, from the get-go, from the first day of rehearsal, we just greeted each other with open arms and just hugged each other 
the entire time. Like that was the tone that was set from mm -hmm. the very beginning. And all the the ABT veterans and things like that, they've been very open to showing the newbies the ropes, so to speak, and teaching us how things are and how things go and what's willing to change. And that's also a big credit to Curtis and the, the creative team for casting and assembling such an open group of people. Mm -hmm. like, and that's Curtis Overby, who's the director and choreographer. Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, Cass. Mm -hmm. And the, Cass as the well. Cass casting agent. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so Ryan, you know, we talked about how you're a character of Claude. You know, while it's truly an ensemble piece, your character really is the one who has some difficult decisions to make and you sort of follow him. I think I think it's a way for the audience to really find a way into the piece, if Absolutely. you want to say, because it's a lot of maybe feelings that they've experienced as well, no matter what age they are. Um, but you're clearly not old enough to have been around when the show first <laughs> came out. So how did you research the part? Did you talk to your parents or your grandparents who were alive? And I'm assuming you were dealing with some of the issues that happened in the late 60s. Yeah, so um, I, I was actually having dinner with some family who was in town last night for the show. I was talking to my aunt about it and her brother had come back and she said that he was treated almost like a criminal because people were so upset about the war and about the outcome that these, these poor men that were coming back that were going through a lot mentally, they didn't have anywhere to turn and so a lot of them turned to things like alcohol and, and drugs and stuff like that because there were no programs set up for these guys that were coming back that had seen some really terrible, terrible traumatic things. Um, so yeah, I've talked to a lot of people about things like that. There's a gentleman who saw the show, who showed me a picture of him in a foxhole. Really? And he, it was, it was very emotional for me and very emotional for him. And, and it was a very um, intense moment of, of just thanking us for, for, for representing that time the way that I think that we do. And, and um, he was very thankful and it was, it was very sweet. So yeah, I mean, I've, I've reached out to a couple different people. Um, but it was a really tough time for these guys coming back and and Claude as a character just is kind of going through the same thing that the whole nation was going through at the time. It's the sense of duty, sense of nationalism, and then the sense of this movement that all these young people, his friends, are taking up and he's divided. He doesn't know which way to go. Where do I go? Is exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Songs. Yeah. Um, so Chanel, you were, you know, this is obviously a big rock musical. You were in a big rock musical here at ABT last year, Jesus Christ Superstar. Yes. So how, do, how does the experience between that compare and what do you hope audiences will, or what do you think audiences will think about the, the experience here with Hair? Um, well, how they compare, I think they're two very different pieces. Let, let me start off saying that. Um, Jesus Christ Superstar, the way that we portrayed it was um, very, like, using Jesus kind of like a revolutionary. And I liked that we depicted him that way because um, I think that spoke to the times. <laughs> We're going through a lot right now as a nation. And I think that choice of making him more of a revolutionary was a statement. Um, but for us, it, it's a different type of statement. Unfortunately, like you mentioned with the shootings and everything that have happened with the youth rising, um, that is a dialogue that is, I mean, it happens to be that we're doing our shows and then it's synonymous at a time where that was recently um, prevalent and which is awful yeah but then there's a sense of pride that I have for doing this show showing that yeah we are playing teenagers essentially at this time period that are not afraid to speak out against um, the war um, and like there was a lot of kids that did stage walkouts just this week uh, in like Gilbert and, and you know everywhere yeah. from elementary school to high schools and I was on Facebook and then looking at friends of mine who was like my kid was greeted across the street with guys with guns waving them at children because that's the world that we kind of live in right now and yeah. so to be able to do this show and to make a statement but also not to make a commentary about what's going on today because that is not what we're doing we're just showing that this is what time was like then if you happen to draw a parallel that's up to you yeah. Um, but the fact that it's still a little bit relevant is not surprising. Um, but to compare Jesus Christ Superstar and this, I think they're two completely different things. But the one thing that is in common is the set designer. <laughs> Aaron is incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and his, this is insane. I thought the Jesus Christ Superstar set was beautiful, but this is like <laughs> top yeah. level. Well, and also the lighting, every, the whole production was just this yeah. whole, it all just, the whole audience, I think it just it feels connected with everybody on stage. So are, are any of you a little more uptight 
individuals and have found that this experience has changed you and that you kind of want to go out and spread peace and love to everyone just like the characters in the show do? I don't know if any of us are up to no, we're not. <laughs> no, I don't think not we are. Terrible. I think, yeah, I yeah. think that Curtis and Cass probably picked up on that when they were assembling us as a cast. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that it definitely has, at least for me, like reinvigorated my passion and, and spreading messages of peace and love, especially with all the things that are going on right now. Um, but I think as a cast, we're all pretty, uh, pretty open, open, uh, open. And people, we've, yeah. I think we've already learned so much from each other. I agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I have just like I've enjoyed so much working with with the tribe. So, <laughs> Katie, you know, we talked about how it was fifty years ago when the show, you know, and I, you know, your character, you know, obviously a lot of the men in a lot of the male characters are going to be drafted or going to be sent off to war, and who knows what's going to happen to them. But you know, your character, I really feel like fifty years later, is probably going to is in her late sixties. What do you think if, if there was a sequel to Hair set today? What do you think? What do you think she would be? And what would she be doing? Well, this sounds kind of boring. It wouldn't wouldn't, wouldn't make for a great sequel. <laughs> <laughs> but I I just feel like um, you know she would have taken these experiences that she had, and I don't know. Um, she could be trying her hardest to to take those experiences and and putting them to good use by uh, teaching a course at Columbia about feminism you know trying to trying to um, help to to mold young minds not mold young minds because I don't think she would do that but but just um, use her experiences to, to better the youth well, of today yeah so. in, in any way she could um, well, let's talk about there's there's something infamous that happens at the end of the first act <laughs> um, where there's some no. nudity in the show it's very very discreetly done mm -hmm. but Chanel what is what was that experience Chanel. like <laughs> as the ABT veteran here um, <laughs> it, you know and going back to my question about when you go out to the audience is it scary or thrilling you know what I'm probably the wrong person to ask this to because I vacuum naked you know what I'm saying so, um, <laughs> be real I've always been very body positive uh, and I'm, I'm happy to say that because we are all different and we're different body types and we're different shapes and sizes and colors and mm -hmm. I love that and um, I think I even responded to our company manager when I was offered the contract let's get naked K E E E D D D D D D D because I was always I was already ready to embrace that mm -hmm. um, yes of course it's scary but I think it's more scary doing it in front of my friends necessarily than doing it in front of oh. a bunch of people that we don't know. Strangers, yeah. Yeah, but, um, but it was really thrilling. Like the day that we did it, and you guys can attest to that, it was very like, okay, everybody, we got together mm -hmm. and we're like collectively breathing. <laughs> and, well, it's, you know. it's really like a, it's a freeing celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is. And like I said, it's, it's so... It's hard, it's hard to describe, but I mean, it's not salacious. Mm -hmm. It's very discreet, and, right. and it's this and it's this culmination at the end of the first act. So I mean, it's I think you know the beauty of it comes through. It's a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. It's very tasteful. Mm -hmm. So Ryan, my last question is for you. What do you think the most important theme of the show is, and what do you hope ABT audiences will take from it? Yeah, um, I mean, there are a lot of themes in the show, but I think the most important thing is if you feel passionate about something and you think that something needs to change and needs to be addressed I think take up arms and and take action and do it peacefully I mean Margaret Mead says in the show I think she mm -hmm. says do whatever you want be whoever you are as long as you don't hurt anyone right. and I think that's that's a great message it's if you feel like you need to, to do something chances are you probably do need to do something so I think I think the message of peace and action are two really important things that I hope well, thanks, guys. Thank Hair at Arizona Broadway Theater here in Peoria through March 25th.